Well, for our luncheon today, I'd, I'd like to at least sort of focus on where the concept for this, uh, this is meant to be a luncheon where you guys are throwing your ideas at, uh, at the speaker as well as the speaker just talking to you about something. You know, a lot of us are familiar, well, already familiar with the NASA Centennial Challenges program. The real thing that we need to figure out now is how does that program help us, how does it get us to where we want to go, and how does it further the industry? And I'm sure Ken will be able to tell you a lot more about that. I know almost all of you have met Ken. But as NASA people go, first he's a contractor, so he's not that bad a guy. <laughs> and secondly, this is someone who really does understand what we're trying to do, someone who's focused on our part of the industry, on changing things, on doing things in a new way. So I think it's definitely worth us uh, you know, seeing how much we can get out of this session. The other thing that I've been, uh, has been suggested that I, that I do is I mentioned that there's, a, uh, there's this book that, you, that you know, I've been told to encourage you guys to get. The interesting thing about this, <laughs> if any of you are familiar with it, the interesting thing about this is that it says it was edited by Rick Tumlinson with Aaron Medlicott. But it fails to mention there was this other person who helped edit the book that, uh, well, just doesn't seem to be listed anywhere in the book. And, uh, well, it was six months of my year a while back, so. <laughs> anyway, it's a good book to get. Yay. And without any more of me rambling on, Ken DeVidia. Thank you very much. This thing on. Good afternoon. Thank you, everybody, for coming to lunch. I think it's a, it's a, it's a real honor to be here. I want to thank Jeff and Rick and uh, Krista for letting me come here and talk. Um, many of you have met me before. Many of you have seen the presentation about Centennial Challenges before. Instead of giving you the standard spiel that I normally give about Centennial Challenges, what we wanted to do was to start a whole sequence of what we're calling mini workshops. And I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But it is, as Jeff mentioned, an interactive session. Um, I've got a couple of plants in the audience here so that if, if we get deathly quiet, then uh, I'll be able to point to the certain people and uh, they'll be able to keep the conversation going. We're supposed to get, Jeff, what time are we supposed to get out of here? Uh, that's 40 minutes and that'll be perfect. I'll ramble on for about um, 5 to 10 and then uh, you guys get the floor basically from then and you're going to get to watch me type your ideas down. Um, and I'll tell you what we'll be doing and what we'll be doing with that information later. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Centennial Challenges for the people who don't know about it. Centennial Challenges is a prize competition program that's based on the success of the X Prize, DARPA Grand Challenge, and as well as the long history of successful prizes that have been conducted primarily in the aeronautics industry back in the early part of the 1900s. Um, we have certain program goals there, um, and basically I'm going to talk about those five goals, basically why we're doing Centennial Challenges. Um, oh. Let me go right here. I skipped over a whole bunch right there for some reason. Um, we are having user error. One second, please. And let me figure out what's going on, because it's going from slide two to slide eight. And that's because all these are hidden, and they're not supposed to be. So let me unhide them. There we go. Sorry about this, people. OK, back to the show. Number one, there are five reasons why we are doing, are doing prizes. And one of the goals, or the main goals, and one of the reasons we're doing it is because it provides NASA an alternative uh, procurement mechanism. A lot of times we don't think of prizes necessarily as a way to go out and get things, but that's what it is in, in, uh, in its core. There are three basic ways to procure things. One is through the, um, the uh, open market. If uh, product or services exist the way um, that you want them, if, if you need a product or a service that doesn't necessarily exist, one way to go and get it is through a contract or a grant, and that's what typically NASA and a lot of the government does use. Here you're going to see a lot of, uh, uh, of the pros and cons of using a grant, or a lot of the characteristics. The third method is prizes, and there are a lot of reasons why prizes as a procurement method is more advantageous in some cases than contracts or grants. Um, here I've got a whole list of things, what the target technologies might be, the selection process and whatnot. The highlights of this that I like to point out are, number one, with a prize competition, you don't have to be able to tell the future very well. I don't know many people that are good at telling the future, even when given a lot of information, sometimes more than uh, too much information, about a, a possible solution paths, 
it's still very hard to tell the future, which one is the best one to do, which one's going to have the highest rate of success. And that's exactly what we try to do in the contract um, selection process, proposal evaluation process. You try to tell the future, and sometimes you're right and sometimes you're not. Uh, whereas with prizes, it doesn't really matter. As long as you spend a lot of time writing the, the prize rules, which is equivalent to a contract statement of work. If you can write the statement of work for prizes very, very, very well, then you can just sit back after that. Your work is done and you should be able to get something that meets your demands and fulfills the requirements. Also, I'll just talk to the cost uh, row here a second. Costs for contracts are typically at least 100% of what the estimated cost is, where for prizes, you can really get away with very low costs. And uh, that's very, very interesting for the government. Number two, one of the reasons that we're doing uh, Centennial Challenges is to reach new communities. Now, I show a picture here of uh, John Harrison, who he's the guy that won the Longitude Prize. I show him there because nobody knew this guy existed when the Longitude Prize was uh, sent out. He wasn't college educated. He wasn't on the radar screen of anybody that, you know, was uh, the, the uh, Royal Academy or any of the intelligentsia of Britain, but he was able to win the prize because of the way that the prize was set up. Um, anybody could enter and anybody could win and he provided the solution. He was um, developing a lot of new technology for his time. Also, we're able to reach new communities through the fact that prizes are very, very, very popular. And I don't know if I necessarily under understand this, maybe this is because of the um, element of competition involved, but for a very, very small program that we are, and million dollars um, in FY04, fiscal year 04, and we had 10 million dollars in fiscal year 05. For a total of 12 million dollars, we've generated a lot of PR without even really trying. Um, after every competition, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, we track how much media we get, um, and that's going to happen again after the XPRIZE Cup. Third reason we're doing prizes is to address technology hurdles. Um, there's this mid-TRL gap that sort of exists in the way NASA does business and competitions are good at Gap, things from new ideas, bringing them to the point of getting a working prototype. And so NASA, or the prizes are a good way to deal with that. Um, we also address non-critical technology paths. And this quote here is from, um, it's been referred to a number of times, I think in the discussions that I've had with people. Michael Griffin has had mentioned talking about fuel depots, how we don't need it for the architecture for um, Constellation that we've set up so far. But if it existed, it would be great, and that would be exactly the type of enterprise which should be left into the marketplace. We saw that quote, and within a week or two, we were sitting there going, okay, we need to have a fuel depot prize. Because when we're looking for ways that we can stimulate the industry to go th to produce something that would be a benefit to NASA. And so that, in fact, is going to be the goal of today's uh, interactive part of my talk. And also, we, we, we like to promote synergies. Um, for example, our wireless uh, power transmission competition and our high strength to weight materials competition power and tethers, we put them together and they're being conducted in the form of what's being called the elevator games. Um, a group called the Spaceward Foundation is very, very interested in space elevators. NASA is not very necessarily very, very interested in space elevators. However, the two component technologies there could be put together and, put, uh, and conducted and presented in the context of a space elevator, and we're okay with that. Um, personally, I believe that 80% of the benefit from the technology that you're going to need for a space elevator will come. 20% of development. So it may be that we end up coming up with new ideas of ways to get to space without ever building a space elevator. But I think going down the path of developing better materials and um, getting higher efficiency beam uh, power transmission, I think will help us um, greatly. So number four, the returns outweigh investment. And this is the, the dollar argument. Historically, winners spend on the order of three times the purse value. Bert Rutan spent on the order of 27 million, or I should say Paul Allen spent on the order of 27 million. The $10 million X prize. Uh, we have a figure of 10 to 20 times the purse value in terms of how, many, how much is spent by collectively all of the teams. For example, in the Ortigue prize, the, um, the prize that Charles Lindbergh won for the first um, flight between New York and Paris, uh, it is estimated that going for the $25,000 prize, a total of $400,000 $400, or 16 times was spent by all the teams vying for that prize. Um, we are working with a very of how to run the prizes. NASA does not administer the prize. NASA does not execute the prize. All we do is put up the money. We've been successful in identifying what we call allied organizations, organizations that agree to conduct, which means they agree to administer and execute the prize at no cost to the U.S. government. So 
what that does is it allows us to keep our program overhead very low and of our $12 million, 85% of that at least has gone to purses. Um, and when I say the 15% over we're working with, that includes salaries, that includes uh, um, benefits, as well as other um, sets of cards and communications equipment or communications tools that we use to get the word out. So basically, we're trying to run this like a nonprofit. And we do everything. I basically do a lot of the graphics. We, we put stickers on our own envelopes, and we just do that stuff. We're really trying to do things very differently with the exploration systems. And to NASA's credit, they're letting us do that. They're letting us do that. I've been asked before, you know, if you wanted to get more people working on Centennial Challenges, you know, what kind of skill, skills would you want in that person? And like the first question I want to ask is, you know, what nonprofits have you worked for and what did you do? Because you just got to have that in your mind that you can't be just printing 200 page documents on one side of paper, you know? You got to just, <laughs> it just makes no sense. <laughs> anyways, I'll get off of that. But anyways, also we want to motivate, inspire, and educate. And I think the top four motivators for people that conduct in prizes, number one, and you can argue whether or not number one should be in the first place or second place, but number one, a lot of people do it for the challenge. Just because there's a problem out there to do. I want to congratulate x -Corps that went out with a prize offering $5,000 for a, what was it, a steam pump? A pump motor. Five measly thousand dollars. And somebody did it. Somebody went forth and they, they built this little motor in restrictions with the performance capabilities and they did it within the time constraint it was an ex a great example and it's just so it's thrilling to see even s what we would consider small prizes to generate the interest and they're doing it for the challenge number two reason is probably for the I'm estimating the big picture market capability they're going on they're looking toward having a market or a product they can sell being the first in a market and so it's really about the follow-on market number three is the glory and the glamour of winning a prize Number four, I think, is for the money. The money, as you'll see in a minute, for our prizes especially are measly. We, we put out prizes that are valued on the order of, in the previous slide, you saw 20% of what the estimated value is, one-fifth. But it's not really about the money. In some cases, and I've got a whole history talk that I could give, but in some cases it is about the money. Paul McCready was going after the money. Um, Louis Blerio with his number 11 to f crossing the English Channel, it was about the money. He was about to go bankrupt as well. Anyways, also, it, prizes inspire people. If they can do it, so can I. And also, like I said, prizes, they really reach a lot of people. So what are we doing today? Centennial Challenges has nine competitions out right now. Um, they total about $4 million in purses. Um, these are the prizes here. If you have not found, heard anything about these prizes, come and talk to me later. I'll give you more details. And in a couple minutes, I'll tell you something that you can get that will give you more information as well. But anyways. A couple of, we've only run two competitions. We're a very new program. Last October we had two competitions. One was the um, beam power competition and one was the um, tether competition. Here they're listed as high strength to weight materials and wireless power. The picture you see here is uh, one of the teams from, uh, actually that one's from uh, British Columbia with their climber. This is out at Ames. And then the second picture is the tether competition. It's a tug of war between these very, very light two gram tethers. And uh, nobody won the competition. We gave away no money. Both of these competitions be held at the X Prize Cup this year in uh, conjunction with the last one listed, the Lunar Lander Challenge. So, and again, we got about 12 and a half million TV viewers for the Beam Power competition with, with the uh, coverage that was um, produced for the free media, or by the free media, and it's equivalent of about $570,000 worth of advertising. And again, some of our overhead was to pay a company to tell us where we sh showed up on TV screens, what channels, and how much it was worth. So, I mentioned that we work with allied organizations, and right now, organizations working with us. Some of them you've never heard of. CAFE, for example, Space Flight America. And to be honest with you, it could be a couple guys working in their garage. I don't really care. Uh, it, to put on a competition, you have to know how to run an event. You don't have to be a technical expert in the technology. It helps to have connections and to understand the, the community a bit. But a, a couple of these organizations are a couple people working out of their garage, but they're doing a good job. One of these organizations I'm sure you've heard of before, and they're our most recent allied organization. By the end of the year, we're hoping to add at least two more organizations to this list. And the funny thing about this is we don't pay them anything. They're doing this totally for the guarantee of the government paying a purse. 
So they want either they want the program to help grow their own organization or they want the association with NASA. Whatever their motivation is, we don't really question it very much because we're making out like bandits. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, and we give the, those organizations as much control as we possibly can. For the government is never easy. It takes a lot of patience. But we, are tr we try to support them in any non-monetary way as much as possible. So we write letters, we make phone calls when it's appropriate, and we try to help them do their job because they're doing us a great service. I wanted to show you this picture. This is our exhibit. It's a 10 by 10 pop-up exhibit. And again, this is where some of our overhead goes. Along with this, um, at the bottom there, you see a bunch of figures, historical figures in prize history. And then those big white panels in the middle under the Centennial Challenges red bar, that, those are panels that describe individual competitions. In association with this uh, exhibit, we also generated a set of cards. And there are, there's a set of cards that's, I think there's seven cards here that talk about seven of those nine competitions that we're running. And then over here, there's another set of cards, eight cards, that talk about the historical figures. Each card has got a different person on it. And the last one is Bert Rattan. And this whole, I've got about 50 sets of these cards out on the piano just outside the door there. So um, you can make a mad rush now, or you can wait till afterwards and go grab it then. And if you don't get a set of cards, then I'll send it to you. That's not a problem. I don't think they're worth anything, so. <laughs> well, they're, they're not worth anything if you put them up on eBay, that's what I'm saying. I think they're worth great in terms of... So anyways, in the next couple months, we plan on having another three competitions announced. It's a very ambitious schedule, and I wouldn't hold myself to that timeline, but that's the goal by the end of the calendar year to have three more competitions, those first three there announced. And then next fiscal year, to get the, the following four out the door. But these are the things we're looking at. A lot of the rules for these competitions were issued in a request for comments last February that was sent out to the public to pr provide comments to us to tell us um, how to make the rules better. Uh, we had a closing date on that because in the software that we use, there's got to be a closing date. But in fact, we still, we're still getting comments, for example, on solar sail. We just got some comments last week. And we're taking comments all the time. So if you want to find out more about that, those kind of um, competitions, just let me know, and I'll uh, be happy to tell you about them. So now we'll get to the meat of the uh, presentation here. Back in June of 2004, uh, 15, 16, June 2004, it was a very hot couple of days in Washington, D.C. We had a workshop which was to generate ideas for new competitions. The way Centennial Challenges started out about a year earlier, I imagine, uh, in fact, yeah, about a year or so earlier, I was working at XPRIZE. XPRIZE had been put under contract by NASA to come up with a list of ideas they generated a list of about 130 um, different prize competitions. And then what they did was they narrowed it down to about 30 of the top sellers. Um, that came within NASA. We iterated around. It was shown to managers. And then we decided to pulse the public to get their ideas. We held this workshop on, uh, in June of 2004. About two th 200 people came from um, universities, uh, government, private industry, individuals two days of sessions. The morning of the first day was held on what we called brainstorming sessions, where we just threw out ideas and somebody wrote them down frantically. The second, the second half of the first day and the whole second day, we focused on 20 of those top 30 ideas that XPRIZE had generated, and then we took 10 or 12 of the ideas that were generated by the first morning, the first day's session, and we put those into separate one-hour, what we called rules definition sessions. And people then fleshed out a little more, in a little more detail, what should competitions be. At that time, we promised we were going to have more, uh, pre, uh, more workshops, and it, through 2005, we kind of really didn't do that. But we got the idea that what we should do is go to different, instead of you coming to us, we wanted to come to you. Come to your, pre, your conferences and say, let's have a mini workshop. So that's what we're going to do right now. Really, all we want to get out of this is a list of new ideas. And I don't care if it's a new idea or not. It could be an old idea. Um, there, we do have a lot of ideas out there. Um, we solicit ideas in many if you go to our websites, you can send us an email to ccideas at nasa.gov. It comes to me. People send me ideas that way. We have a website with a form you could fill out, and you can hit submit, and it comes to me. You can, we have a PDF file you can print out. You can write in it and put it in an envelope and mail it to us. It'll come to me. Or you can fax it to us, and hopefully it'll come to me. So basically, um, this is what we're going to do now. So um, really, all I'd like to do is open up the floor to you guys, and you just tell me. and the here is we're focusing on new space. So what can we do? What would be a good prize for this industry to get something going, to stimulate the, uh, some new industry or some new facets of industry? 
And if we can get, we want to know what the idea is. And if you've got a why, we'll take a why as well. So basically, this is where you get to watch me type, and uh, I get to listen to you. So who would like to start? Sir, you. Perfect. Thank you very much. That's good. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to see something about space education aimed at the secondary and high school markets and uh, elementary markets. And what I suggest is a prize for the company that delivers 100,000 student payloads into space in one year. That delivers 100,000? Yep. Student wow. payloads in one year. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, okay, and you said secondary um, Second education level? Secondary education. But it's K through 12, is that it? Yep. Okay, perfect. Sir? There should be one for composite reusable tanks. Composite reusable tanks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you any better specs than that, or just composite reusable tanks? And don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've talked about, we've talked about, we've talked about first, last to first, actually. It sounds better when you say first to first, but last to first yeah. the competitions. Okay, next. Uh, way back there, yes. Flexible, flexible fuel containers for the moon. Okay, I heard a lady's voice here. Oh, Robin. Um, do you have a prize already for putting a small satellite in orbit? Putting a, I, we do not. That's a good one. You know what the, okay, let me tell you a story a second. We had an idea, we had an idea for a human orbital prize. And in fact, we've been thinking about this, it would be $100 million or something like that. Somebody said, and then we were writing the rules and writing the rules and writing the rules. And it gets very complex to write the rules. And then somebody said, your rules are too complex. All you do is take a, get a voucher made of special cloth or with, you know, in, what do you call it, embossed with some special seal or something so it can't be forged that says, return this you know, to the owner and you will get $100 million and put that in orbit. <laughs> That makes sense. Okay, that's it. I, I put a prize for solar cell efficiency because that's one of the key technologies for space solar power. I want a maximum so, solar cell, solar uh, cell efficiency. Solar cell efficiency, minimal size, maximum power output, and the lightest structure weight. Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, yes, sir. This is great. I love it. Yes, in structure, and then purple. Striped. Striped. Uh, first. Did you have another one, or that was it? Yeah. Okay, it's purple. Radiation shielding techniques. That's a big one. Uh, testing is the big question in that one. Uh, okay, yeah, quite, quite true. It, instead of a uh, John Glenn prize, how about a stage prize that gives you four million bucks every time you hit a new Mach number? For, for a fully reusable vehicle. For each, so $400 million for, for a fully reusable. So you're saying starting at Mach, Mach 4 and then Mach 5 and then... That's, these are good. It's, it's amazing. It gets... I have not... We have not yet. Yes, Dallas? Autonomous construction. Robotic construction. Fully autonomous? You know, we've got one that's going to be for partial. But anyways. Not good enough. Okay. Let me, let me go to this side of the room here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Demonstrate fuel depot storage. In fact, on our RFR, on our request for comments of the rules, we had a rule set for a, uh, a fuel depot on there, and I, the, the prize wasn't, the purse wasn't big enough that we were estimating. Yes, sir, you with your hand up back there. Robotic regolith mining? Robotic regolith 
mining. I'll mention that we have a, a regolith excursion competition that's going to be conducted on May 12, 2007. It's being run by the California Space Education Workforce Institute in the Santa Maria Fairgrounds. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, at Okay. So like 50 or something like that? You choose, but choose something that is achievable in the near term, but it's not short term. So uh, the ISP of O, um, H2 and O2, ISP, oh, whatever. Start at 600. Start at 600? You may want to go way down to the Fine, 700. It's easy, it's just the numbers. <laughs> I just write the numbers, okay, yes sir. So the follow-on to the Lunar Lander Challenge, auto refueling, yeah. automatic refueling between hovers. It's hard to type and think at the same time. There's two people typing. Neil. I just, uh, just came back from the RASTA conference up in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Ohio. Beautiful Dayton, Ohio. Uh, and their big push is on reusability, but also um, to date, our turnarounds on RLDs, uh, NASA was about six to seven months or two to three years. What thrust? What thrust? <laughs> with, uh, with two weeks, I would guess. Okay. Uh, let's put it down as uh, how many flights to uh, space, 20 kilometers, even in 24 hours. I just went by day. Oh, well, let's do it daily. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. 20 kilometers. So don't do that. that. Um, okay, Randall. We flew for 24 hours around. It was a real bad idea for crew rest. Maybe in a week or two. Get two crews. They're just going to put a marine in it, send it off somewhere, and just <laughs> put another marine in it. I'm a marine. Oh, well. Okay, uh, let me go. Yes, sir. You need a drink shirt. Uh, cool reentry. Ah, cool reentry. That's good. Yes, sir. You. The propulsion technology used the cheapest fuel possible and the use cheap, uh, the lowest dollar per pound sent to orbit. Lowest dollar per pound to orbit. Okay, perfect, perfect. Let me go to a table I haven't seen before. Okay, center table right there. How do you how do you evaluate that? I I missed that. Say that one more time. That's what? Oh, that's my job. That's, what I'm <laughs> that's why I got the big box. Okay, yes, sir, you back there. Okay, uh, $7.50 for uh, delivered to the engine. Say, uh, at $6, $6 per pound of thrust, say, $15 pounds, and then $10,000. Uh, okay, $6, $6 per pound of thrust. Mm -hmm. Then what? That's basically it. Then set, set a, a price. If you want, you're looking for a low cost, small engine. So establish, your, establish the price that you want, and say, this is achievable. And okay. Okay. I'll put that in there. Okay, next. Yes, sir, you. Yes, sir, you. Advanced fuel fusion braking. 
Advanced fuel fusion braking. Is that correct? Break even. Break even. More out than in. More out than in. Every little bit helps. I'm sorry. I'm not like I'm thinking of it. Okay, yeah. Most efficient economic uh, robotic assembly device can put solar panel, solar power panels in the world. Okay, you see where I'm at. Go back. <laughs> Most efficient economic robotic assembly technology can assemble uh, space solar power panel in our assembly. How am I doing? Okay. Okay, next. Yeah, future. I just would like to encourage you to use robotics in place of autonomous. Not necessarily autonomous. Uh, if you have that. Uh, so, well, what, what, what about those events that don't require any robotics whatsoever? All right. But can still go with solar. The answer is up there. Don't worry about it. Economics. Uh -huh. Either you said agilized or no. Let me go way back there, then I'll come to you over there. First you. Lunar underground boring machines, okay. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not even going here. What? The first company to reuse disposable hardware for secondary use. What? It's like taking an external tank and using it for something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, we have you over there, sir. Yeah. To what the public you told me to inspire. In fact, Centennial Challenges has got a, a bunch of ideas for what we call outreach um, or our quest challenges, which are, are dealing with outreach and whatnot, but that's good that I see it up there. To encourage the public, I don't know, whatever the heck you said. But I get it. Yes, Wenda. Since that one was written up there, I'll say what I was thinking, and that is a prize for the That's good. That's good. Lunar sample return. Yes, ma'am. Could it be human and robotic, or at least there's humans sure. in it? for the best and most, or what, that's what I heard, but best approach to eye tar. Okay, then we are, yes sir. Montan return from where? Okay, good, 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 let's go, I want people I haven't seen before you, sir. Oh, you have another one? One time, it's, it's European time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh, most efficient, cost reliable uh, robot measures on the moon. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. How about you? Um, what about uh, the first vehicle that can take high resolution photographs of the lunar surface as well? Because it will allow them to do the little check out where the asteroid is. And also to check with the old Apollo stuff. Do I have the idea there, correct, for, to take high-res pictures of the lunar surface? From, uh, from orbit. From orbit. Okay, yes, sir. You, you, yeah. The most powerful article to uh, persuade President Bush T 
here down the ITAR. <laughs> you guys need to rip now. Okay. Yes, the map. Here, here down the ITAR wall. Okay, okay, I'll put the wall. Okay. It's like a burning wall. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Oh, purple blazer, did you have something? No. Okay, to, to, to the left, right. First off, earth surface fuel plant or assembly. That could include low earth orbit on the moon or even some sort of a fuel collection facility in space and just leave the fuel open to whatever something can figure out might be a deliverable fuel. That could even be thermal power, could be collected hydrogen from low earth orbit, it could be all kinds of things. But first off, off the surface fuel manufacturing and okay. also, the second one would be a prize for coming up with the best competition idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there will be a prize. Yeah. Get, there'll be 50 of them, and they're all outside there. It's more for the fastest people. Okay, I'll take that one away. Yes, sir, yeah. Manny. Uh, first transmission of uh, one kilowatt of power from, uh, from orbit to the surface of the Earth. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Well, that's That'd be a good one. satellites from geo. for data mining, huge, these huge data sets that are out there and never been uh, mined before, or that have been minimally mined. You know, I could put out a competition for $10,000, maybe five of them, and just say, go mine this data set. We'll have a conference, you present a paper, we'll pick the best papers who win $10,000, and we'll have every grad student fueled on coffee and beer and <laughs> Red, Bull, Red Bull doing it. Yes, sir, standing up in the back. Okay, uh, Dallas again. That's very good. Yes, sir, you were there. Earth? Biosphere is not, does it count? Only cults are allowed to compete. So it's first person, two people in the world's life support system for three months. And again, Biosphere didn't help? I think they took by steps because they cheated and blew all their data. They didn't cheat and blow all their data. Yes, sir, now you. First return to Earth of 10 kilograms of platinum metals from any source. Group metals from any source. Yeah, Neo, Lunar, Phobos, whatever. All the easy energy ones. Space source. Okay. How much? Uh, 10 kilograms? Oh, did you put it? Did you put it in the Yeah, 10, 10 kilograms. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, or other precious resource. Okay, but he wanted, but he's on platinum groups. There's a reason for There's a reason for platinum group stuff. Yes, sir, you have blue shirt. Whatever you want to call it. 
Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, let's come over here, Eric. Okay, man. Uh, high resolution global topography of the moon, like say three meters or better. <laughs> that was kind of. Okay, we kind of talked about that. Uh, purple shirt. First not for profit organization fund 25 teachers to take. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the idea for um, a, a design competition for universities. Design a, a astronaut glove box, 4.3 PSID, that you can make out of materials we find at Home Depot for under 500 bucks. Simple, simple shape, designs and mechanisms, comment to spaceflight, is that? Human spaceflight, yes. Okay. Oh, okay, next. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, now you're right there. And then you back there. Tell me if this is crazy. You know those 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 rice pad um those rice 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 what do they call them? The mats, the rice paper mats. Yeah. Just take that and roll those out of the moon. Wouldn't that work? No, I don't know. Okay, yeah, you back there. <laughs> Energy efficient efficient method for refining moon regla. Yeah, that's you. Okay. Determine the minimum sea level in which a human baby can develop, be, uh, be born in, uh, that it can live um, normally on the Earth. And then live normally? No, and then it live normally on the planet. On the moon? No, I, on Earth. Earth. Okay. You yeah. want it to be able to come home. You want it to come home. Okay, Rick, you're always good for a fun. Yeah, that's a shorter way to write pieces of glass. Transparent material. I don't care whether it's aluminum or whatever. That's what Rick meant to say. How we doing on time, Rick? How we doing on time, uh, Jeff? Five minutes? Okay, give me give me the two minute sign when you get when we get there. Purple boy. Oh, I'm at my backup slide. Yeah. Two. And that's the basis of my app, my quest challenges. Perfect for visual and performing arts. We just haven't found them yet. Maybe in those studies. What? There we go. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Bobo time. We've done you a couple. Let's go to the guy next to you. Actually, maybe a play on that. It sounds silly at first, but how about a competition for the best roadside billboard that inspires people to like space, and then NASA would fund the placement of those billboards after the competition in ten cities in America. I mean, if you want the public to, to start seeing these stuff, then it's a better for their eyes. Okay, that's good. That's very good. Yeah, you did. Best plan for uh, establishing a space development bank, funding some of the winning great ideas. To perfect, perfect, perfect. Way back there. Low gravity or zero gravity models of gas separation. Low G or micro G, let's say. Volatile gas separation. From Luna Regolith, are you talking? Yes. Control M. Don't forget Gillian Murray in there somewhere. Okay, Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, Richard. Lunar dust mitigation. Is that that's correct? Yeah. Yes, sir, you. That's you.
you guys have thought about this. This is good. Yeah, you right there. Mass production of commercial Of commercial products? In orbit. I have no idea if I'm spelling correctly. Yeah, you again. Demonstration of best design concept for orbital space plane that is commercially viable to carry passengers from one any spot on Earth to another spot on Earth with minimal. So kind of like a hypersonic boost glide or something. Exactly. Like I'll write that. Boost glide or um, skip glide. Right. Next. That's what is in the next hundred years. Yeah. I think we're catching, okay, a couple more? Let's go with, I hate to say it, I'm going to go three more, and I'm going to try to get people that haven't gone before. Yes, you, um, the lady in blonde hair. Is that you, or red hair? Blonde, red, I don't know. <laughs> Self-healing. Self-annealing. Self-annealing. Keep going then. Uh, I would say scratching your approval. Uh, most inspirational sci-fi program is the best where a lot of uh, people are inspired to find. Okay, the, the self-annealing one. Let's finish that one up. Self-annealing slash, uh, best design for self-annealing slash, fabric slash, material slash, composite surface. Slash, composite. And then the, the spectral retrieval one? Retrieval, which is like a person, so retrieving, um, um, so you're not supposed to do that in orbit. <laughs> and the most inspirational sci-fi program is a lot of science fiction and has been inspired by sci-fi. And uh, by the way, I just handed Amanda Tackman a copy of the uh, High Frontier a couple of weeks ago. Good. Uh, modular interchangeable components for multi-purpose use. Modular interchangeable. I said I was going to take three more, and that's at least four, but I'll go with two more after that. Change it to components. Okay, not co compliments. <laughs> Thank you for checking my spelling. I've been doing better than that. Yes, sir. That I, based off of the previous one, I don't know if you got it, but maybe you could just get something, anything that's previously in orbit, just back, like oh, Boy Shrug yeah. Club or, um, I don't know, Prospero. My college has a boy. So it's kind of, okay, that's good. That's anything good. Okay, one more. One more. Um, okay. Uh, Wendell, if you're going <laughs> to. Fully funded college education for the first baby conceived in space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You guys were great. You, you exceeded expectations by far. I only had allotted, I don't know, 10 or 12 slides for that. You, Exceeded that. Let me show you the last couple things I wanted to show. And I do this in the context of competitions, even though it does kind of get to, to me a little bit. This is a click to add title. Should not be there. Okay, this is a this is a phrase that I had on a T-shirt back in 1985, in four years ahead of the French uh, French uh, bicentennial of the French Revolution. Um, and basically, it said, "Les libertés ne se donnent pas, se prennent." And it was actually attributed to, it wasn't originally spoken that way, it was in Russian, and this is a Russian anarchist and revolutionary, I guess, who said this. I want to change this to say, l'espace ne se donne pas se prenne, which means space. It's not given, it's taken. And this is kind of something that we want to do with the, the challenges. We want to put things out there and let people take it. You know, there's, there's a lot of opportunity out there, and people think of that think of space, and that's normal and that's natural. But I think that space, and this is, a very Rick Tomlinson thing, I think, to say, is uh, space is out there. It's waiting for people like you to, to go and get it. And I think that this is a great forum for that. And I want to thank you for all your, um, for all your input. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to process it, and hopefully you'll see some of those things and challenges in the near future. Thank you very much. Back that list up. Thank you.